Today I continue working on one of my song ideas and trying to arrange it to send it out to a singer and songwriter. And I don't know where Hey guys, it's Monday morning. I'm finally back in the studio after a really relaxed and nice weekend. Today I want to go back and work on the future bass guitar track. I wasn't sure if I want to finish it, so I didn't really work on it in the past couple of days. But I've listened quite a lot to it over the weekend with headphones at home and I think it's a good track. It's definitely something I should finish. So I will start today taking care of the arrangement. I already have all of the elements that I need for the track. It just needs to be laid out and then I will probably just send it to a singer and songwriter and get some really nice vocals. This right here is the entire project of the track. Let me play it to you really quick so that you know what I'm talking about. I have here a verse part. <laughs> build up chorus part and then of course the main part with the lead guitar Between the last time that I showed you this track and now I actually worked a bit on it but I kind of edited into the wrong direction, wasn't really satisfied with it, changed the sounds at the end, I deleted the guitar. So now today I'm going back to this version and that's just one of the nice things in Logic X. You can save alternatives as much as you want to and you can also set it back to previously saved versions. Since I'm using Logic X with these two features and also the autosave, I didn't lose any of my projects. I didn't lose any second that I worked on a track. I can just go back to any point in time. I can do the alternatives whenever I feel like trying out something different. And if it doesn't work as it did unfortunately in this case, I just go back and at least don't lose the, the idea that I had. So the next step is now arranging the track. As you heard from playing you the track, I already have a verse part that is a bit more quiet than the chorus part that is more uplifting. And then the main part with the beat and chord steps. And I actually have here a C part that I didn't even play you yet. And that's actually how I start tracks or writing the tracks. I already have these parts in mind. And then when I come to the arranging stage, I just spread them out. And usually in songs like this, you have a A, B scheme. So it's just um, usually verse one, chorus, verse two, chorus, then the C or bridge part, and then the chorus again, and sometimes again the chorus. If you're doing more club style music, you usually have an intro and outro at the beginning and the end so that the DJ can mix it. And then after the intro you have either a small break or just build up the track until the first big break. Then you build everything up in the break, have the big drop and beat part where usually the main thing of the track is going on and everybody is dancing. And then you either repeat it again or put in a small C part, a drop part. But it's also usually the same, it's just instead verse, chorus, verse, chorus. It's usually break and beat, drum part, break again, and the intros and outros, of course, just to make it able for DJs to mix it. I'm done with a very rough arrangement. I've just laid out the entire track and I'm using the markers here in Logic just to write down which part is which. This makes it easier later to work with it. And I can also make a screenshot of it, send it to the singer and songwriter, and he immediately knows what I'm talking about. 
My plan is to have, of course, vocals on top of the verse and the chorus. The beat, instrumental, chord step part would probably have no vocals on top or just maybe two or three words that are repeated from the chorus part. And then this entire section is repeating again and again, just with the difference that here you have the bridge instead of a third verse, it's the C part and no real intro and outro as you might have with club tracks. This one right here is now 3 minutes 40 long. Maybe a little bit too long, but I like to keep it as it is right now. Because when I send this out to the singer and songwriter, there might be parts that I need to change to make them longer or shorter, to make them fit to the lyrics. They have the main priority when it comes down to a track that is featuring that many vocals, so I will leave it as it is right now, send it out to two or three singer and songwriters that I have in mind that could fit to the style of the track, and then I will go back into the track, change the arrangement, do the automation, the mixing, vocal editing and mastering. Usually when you produce music that has a four to the floor beat, you stick to doing changes every four bars, eight bars, 16 bars, 32 bars and so on. I think in, in like pop music, every eight bars, having something new, something that is changing is, is a good measure. For club music, it can be 16, 32. There are some intros that are 64 bars long just to have enough time to mix it into another track. The more underground uh, the music is, the less change you will have, the less parts you will have. The changes are more over time, you will have more progressive build-ups. But in, in this kind of house music that I'm doing, I try to have like bigger changes every 16 bars, every 8 bars something small. And if, if it's really needed, maybe even every four bars, something really, really small, like a hat doing like a small accent on the first note. Every eight bars, some drum rolls, maybe getting rid of the kick for one bar, just to have enough impact again for the next part. I wouldn't change anything about the system. It's so common. It's in every track like this. You can really just count the bars and you know when the next part will begin. Also, when you're DJing, the intros usually have the 16, 32, 64 bars of intro. And that's the way how you actually mix them together. So let's say one track has 16 bars outro and the next one 16 bars intro. You just put them on top and then you will have when the parts begin with the changes, the one track will stop and the next one will have another part where something is added. So for club music, really stick to this at least in the intro and outros, otherwise you will just throw DJs off. And when DJs don't really know how to mix a track, they won't play it. That's just the way it is. Just to show you that a bit more in detail, let's pick here eight bars and you can see that every eight bars something new is happening. This part here is 16 bars long, this part here is also 16 bars long, this part here in the middle is also 16 bars long. The only point where I didn't follow this rule is right here in between the chorus and the instrumental part. I've added an additional bar just because the guitar is playing a couple of notes before this entire part is actually hitting. Let me play you the part with the additional bar. You can hear that this small guitar part is playing in this little break. And if I remove it, it will just sound horrible because both of the guitars will overlap, the one from the chorus and the one from the instrumental part. But let me play it to you. Having these small break parts in between that throw off the structure of the song a little bit is kind of okay, but if you do that in a part where people are supposed to dance and you change it to 3, 7 or something entirely different, you will throw the people off while dancing. It's kind of melted in our brains to dance to 4, 8, 16. And even if people don't count and don't really recognize it, 
subconsciously they will be feeling weird dancing to the track because it's actually not the right time that the track is changing again. So really try to stick to these kind of measurements of 16, 32 and so on. That's just how music is made, especially pop music and club music. Of course, as always, there are exceptions. If you do very experimental music or you just want to throw the listener off, in some cases this might be necessary, then just do whatever you feel right. I would always argue that what you feel comes first, but if, if you don't know what to do, then just stick to this very simple way of building up a song. For the rest of the day, taking care of trying to find a singer and songwriter for this track, I have two or three in mind that could fit. I have to check if they have the time and also like the track to try and make something for it. And also taking care of a lot of business things that piled up over the weekend. Monday is usually for the entire day my business day. All done with work. It's now 9.20. I even managed to work on a couple of new song ideas so it wasn't just an entire business day. I also found someone that will take care of singing on top of the track. Um, he will at least try and call me back and let me know if he could come up with something that fits to the track and it's good. You never know. That's really something you can't predict that much. So if I hurry up, she won't notice that I'm one and a half hours late. Don't know what to say.